What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another Star Wars The Vintage Collection price guide and market update. There were a number of really nice items that sold, some of them in the UK, and I wanted to cover a lot of these Tri-Logo European release card backs because, at least over here in the US, we don't get many of them. I still have a goal of getting one of these soon, and a shout out to Gerard C. He alerted me to a number of these auctions that were ending just so I could track the prices. So thank you, Gerard. He's a longtime subscriber. He's, he's been there for a long time on the channel. So thank you very much. Um, also, an unpunched Anakin Skywalker name pill sold. And I want to alert, or I want to say thanks to Tim over at Boss Bounty. He, he sent me the, uh, the link for this one. And he mentioned that this is very tough to find unpunched. So I've got the price data on that one as well. So let's dig right in. Uh, the first one is that Anakin Skywalker Revenge of the Sith uh, name pill with, that is unpunched. And, you know, he was saying, Tim was saying that these are very tough to find unpunched. Now, I, I mentioned in a video, I guess, last week or so that I was saying that the Anakin Skywalker name pill is tougher to find than the Darth Vader name pill. And I was referring to unpunched. And I probably didn't say that in the video, so I apologize. The Anakin Skywalker name pill uh, is, is very easy to find punched, but unpunched is, is the problem. It's just really tough. This one was over in the UK. It sold for big money, 540 pounds, which is 631 US dollars. That punch looks nice and clean and very firm in there. This is the, that's what she said. This is the VC 13. And, uh, it looks like it's the US car back. So this is the US card, but yeah, to get that one unpunched is apparently very tough. I, I don't track these early TVC or, or try to buy much of the early TVC that would be unpunched because I know that some of these prices are just stratospheric. And the Clone Commander Cody that we talked about a long time ago on the channel that sold for four figures. I mean, there are some really high demand early TVC 1.0 that just are, are, are almost impossible to find unpunched. And this is clearly one of them. So a big boy price for that one. Uh, a couple of Yoda VC-20s sold. These are not the Canadian versions with the alternate card back that are really expensive, but this one seems to be going up in price fairly dramatically. Uh, this one was unpunched. It was the U.S. card, and that one sold for 140 pounds, best offer accepted, plus shipping. And then one other one sold that I, I was a little surprised by the final sales price, and that one was a punched example, same card back, the U.S. card back. But as you can see above the hanger tab, it did have what looks like to be a pretty significant crease there. It had some edge wear at the bottom of the card. Uh, the back of the card also had damage. You can see it's got X'd out in, front, in the proof of purchase. A lot of wear in the back of the card. So I'm not sure why this one sold so high, to be honest with you. It sold at auction August 28th, and we're going to go through this seller's uh, list of items that he sold. He's got some absolute gems, but this was not one of them. And I'm surprised it sold for 100 pounds, but it did. 100 pounds took that one home, which is $116, versus an unpunched example that was pretty much flawless that was 140 pounds, best offer accepted. So uh, this one seems like an overpay to me. No offense if you're the one who bought that. Uh, here is uh, one that I really want, and I still have not gotten it yet. And thank you to Darth Wizzy. I believe he also sent me uh, this, this link when the auction was still going, but... Times are tight. I could not make it happen, but this is an unpunched General Grievous VC-17, the U.S. card back. It looked pretty clean. It had a couple of dings here and there. You can see in the upper left-hand corner on the back as well as above the hang tab. There's some very slight wear, probably like an 85, low, low 85 kind of grade, but it's still a beauty. And it sold for big money, 215 pounds, which is 251 U.S. dollars on 16 bids for the U.S. card back. And as I alluded to at the beginning of the video, uh, this seller had a number of European release cards with the blacked out stickers on the front. So on the, the top left, you got a four plus symbol that's that's added as a sticker. And then on the top right, they blacked out that, that whole section completely. And then on the back of the card, it's got the standard multi-language warning sticker that kind of covers up the U.S. card back. But anyway, this is Darth Malgus VC96, and it sold for 70 pounds, which is 81.85. Pretty good deal on a pretty clean looking European release, Darth Malgus. Uh, he had just some absolute gems. Here was the Grand Moff Tarkin. That one sold for 132 pounds, which is 155 US dollars plus shipping. Again, the same sticker on the back. Uh, the, this is the one that was really catching my eye, and I believe it was it was either Darth Wizzy or, or Gerard that sent me this one, but wow, what an absolute stunner. This is VC100 Starkiller, 
on the European release card back. That sold for 138 pounds, which is 161 US dollars. I would have paid that all day long if I had had the money for it. Just an absolute gem of an item. Uh, here was the Shea Vizsla, again on the on the European multi-language card back. I mean, when I say the European card back, it's really the US card. It's just got stickers applied for the European market. So just bear with me as, as I talk. Uh, this one sold for 100 pounds, which is 116 US dollars. Now, Let's go back, way back to the way when, when Hasbro had not announced that Shea Vizsla was coming back as a reissue. I can only imagine what the sales price on this one would have been. I bet it would have been at least triple. That, that would be my guess, because this card looked really clean overall. Just an absolute gem. I, you know, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It, it does seem like the European stickered U.S. cards for the European market don't get nearly the same prices as Canadian cards or U.S. card backs, for whatever reason. And I, I mean, you know, I can understand it a little bit because a lot of the card art is covered up by this ugly warning sticker. But for me, I love these warning stickers. I, I just love the multi-language kind of stuff like this. I just think it looks really cool. But, um, you know, those of you over in Europe are just probably so used to it that you don't particularly care about that stuff. Anyway, I, 100 pounds, I think, was a great deal on that one. Uh, the same seller also had a Soka, again, on the tri lingual or multi-language European card and this one was a little different because it didn't have the sticker on the back and I'm assuming it's because uh, it was taken off that's that would be my guess on it I don't see any kind of litho tears or anything but you know I'm sure a lot of these that were released over there in Europe uh, were just they never had the sticker applied on the back and that very well could be the case here I don't see any kind of obvious damage to the back of the card but the front of the card does have those black blackout stickers so you know that this was the European release. So very cool to see that. 205 pounds took that one home, which is 239 US dollars. That's a pretty great deal. You know, just a little bit of edge wear on that bottom right-hand side. Uh, the rest of the card looked pretty clean. I mean, just a little bit of waviness to the card, but that, that could probably flatten out. Again, the same seller also had Jar Jar Binks uh, for the European release card back. And this one also was missing the sticker on the back, as you can see. Uh, that one sold for 150 pounds, which is 175 U.S. dollars. So just some data points for those of you that like to collect those European market uh, early vintage collection figures. Uh, I got a couple, I think, a couple of data points for the Shock Trooper again. I don't know what it is. It seems like certain characters just appear and then appear again the next week and then in the next week. So right now it's the Shock Trooper's turn for, uh, for, for attention on these videos. But uh, this one was a beautiful unpunched U.S. card. Look how beautiful that one is. Really nice. It's, now, it's got the, the paperwork inside on the blister, but there's no sticker on it. So it's missing, I guess, either the Darth Maul or the prototype FET armor sticker. I would assume that, see, this is a VC-110. So I was assuming that would be the prototype FET offer. I, I don't know for sure. I, I guess it could be the Darth Maul offer. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this one sold for 98 pounds, best offer accepted, but... Uh, a really nice example of the shock trooper and here was the other one yeah so i was right there there are two that sold now it looks like uh this car back was also the u.s card it was also unpunched very clean uh, i didn't see any kind of major damage to it uh, here's the back of the card uh, that one sold for 126 dollars on 15 bids plus 5.99 shipping so i mean to me this one was just as clean but it sold for you know, I, I didn't look up the final sales price, but let's call it about $110, $115 U.S. after con converting from pounds to U.S. dollars. And this one sold for $126 over here in the U.S., and obviously we got cheaper shipping. So that gives you a nice tight price range for a nice VC-110 unpunched shot trooper on the U.S. car back. You know, let's call it $110 to $125. Oddball was another one this seller had. This one sold for $101, uh, another U.S. card and also unpunched. It looked very clean. It had the Darth Maul offer. So, you know, this one, uh, Oddball is VC-97, and he's got the Darth Maul offer sticker. So, again, going back to this shot trooper that had the paperwork inside, most likely it was the Darth Maul offer sticker since, uh, since that paperwork is in there. But, again, it was just either never applied by the factory uh, or it was peeled off. I don't know the answer to that one. But uh, next up is the AT-RT driver, uh, beautiful offerless card. Uh, that one was unpunched. Here's one outside of the blister or outside of the uh, clamshell there. As a reminder, Tom Hogan, who runs case shells, he just got in a new batch of case shells. 
His email address is in the video description. You're welcome to reach out to him if you're looking for some clamshells to protect your TVC or vintage Kenner items. I think he also has protectors for the Black Series or G.I. Joe Classified. You'll have to reach out by email just to confirm his inventory right now. But I know that he just got in a batch of those clamshells that fit three and three quarter inch standard size card backs. Uh, anyway, this ATRT driver sold for $117.80. That's kind of right in line with recent sales that we've talked about. Uh, we we saw a couple, I think, that approached like $175, bucks, but it seems like $125 ish is closer to market. And that's about what this one sold for after accounting for shipping. Uh, here was a nice one. This was the Clone Trooper, uh, the 212th Battalion Clone Trooper, also unpunched. Beautiful figure, beautiful card back. And here's the back of the card VC38. A little bit of edge wear, but nothing major, probably 85 grade. A little bit of scuffing by the proof of purchase there, as you can see. And on to Han Solo Yavin. But a very clean card overall. That sold for 81 bucks. That probably, you know, that, that slight damage to the back there probably held that price down just a little bit. Uh, next up was an Obi-Wan. I was surprised by this price, folks. Uh, this is VC-16 Obi-Wan Kenobi with the free Boba Fett, rocket firing Boba Fett mail-away offer. Uh, it was punched, which, you know, this one's tough to find, tougher to find unpunched. I think I had one that I sold that was a CAS 85. I believe I sold that though. Anyway, this is VC 16, but a, a clean example. I'm assuming that this one has gone up a little bit here recently just because people have been watching that Obi-Wan series on Disney Plus, but this is a really cool figure. No doubt about that. $172.50 was the sales price on that one. So that's, that's a big price. Uh, next up, this seller had a nice lot of all vintage collection figures. They look to be all TVC 2.0 figures. You got some Rogue One figures, you got some Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker, Solo, um, and then some other reissues, things like that. Uh, so you can see the whole lot there. So that entire lot of 30 sold for $386 plus $25 shipping. So, you know, let's call it about $12 a piece. That's not too bad of a deal for a nice lot of TVC 2.0. Uh, next up is the first issue, not the reissue, the first issue Republic Trooper on the Expanded Universe card back, VC-113. Looked really nice and clean. That one sold for $220, $220. So that's a little bit higher than we've seen here recently. It came back down after the reissue was announced and actually released. It got down to kind of in the low 100 range. But uh, this one bumped, or this one sold for $220, free shipping. Two of them sold, one is still available, so... Just some information there. Just make sure that if you do buy that last one that it's, you confirm with the seller that it's the original issue VC113, not the reissue. Um, I, I don't know the seller, but you want to make sure that they're not trying to play a bait and switch type of game. But uh, I would assume for $220, it better be that first issue. Next up, we got an yet another data point for VC64 Princess Leia and her slave outfit. This was a gorgeous, unpunched example. This was also the offerless Revenge of the Jedi. So this was the one that was packed into the SDCC Death Star playset or Death Star box set. And uh, what, what an awesome, awesome example. And the price did not disappoint this one. Uh, this seller has three of them. Two of them have sold for $430. $430. Still one available for those of you looking for this and are willing to pay up for for uh, you know, for the SDCC Death Star version of the Revenge of the Jedi, Princess Leia in her slave outfit. Uh, again, you might want to, you know, anytime there's multiples, you just want to make sure that you're getting the item that's pictured. You know, if there's one left, I would ask the seller, hey, I want to see photos of the actual remaining item because this could be a stock photo, and it probably was a stock photo for all three of them. But you know, given how expensive that is, you just want to make sure that you're getting what you pay for. All right, this is, we're going to end on a couple of graded items. I don't. I know that most of you guys don't particularly like to see graded TVC, but I had to show you these two. Somebody sent in a mint and sealed box Razor Crest and had the two pack-in mint-on card figures uncirculated graded. And so that's a lot of money to, to be spending uh, just to ship the whole Razor Crest. AFA then opens up the Razor Crest and grades the two pack-in mint-on cards, the Off-World Jawa and Grogu. Well, this one came back with an uncirculated gold label 9.0 on the modern scale. Beautiful example. But it shows you how much will, uh, you know, collectors are willing to pay up for the uncirculated designation on these pack-ins. Because somebody, again, had to send in that whole Razor Crest in order to get these. And they were sold at auction, which is the biggest shocker. 
$449, $449. Now remember, you can get a really clean Near Mint Plus example of this Pac-In Off-World Jawa Elder for $60 to $80. Yet because this is uncirculated 9.0 graded, someone paid $450 plus shipping on it. And then also the Grogu, the same seller had the uncirculated 9.0 Grogu Razor Crest version with the Chrome Prom. And that one sold for $536 plus shipping. So again, to me, I, you know, my personal opinion on this is I don't care about the uncirculated designation that much. But I, there's probably not many of these. There's probably not many uncirculated 9.0 Razor Crest Pack-In Mint on cards. And there's always going to be some collector out there with deep pockets that wants to have one of three, one of five, whatever the number is. But uh, these, these two sales prices for uncirculated Razor Crest Pack-Ins were certainly eye-openers. And I just wanted to share that on the channel. That's all I really had for this video. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll be back soon.